Hello everyone and welcome back to Make The Music. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get clear, pristine podcast audio using Reaper, using the tools that come in the software itself. And then one little additional free plugin that you can pick up. So we're gonna take your audio that maybe you're using for a YouTube video, a podcast, whatever spoken word audio. I'm gonna show you how to get really clear, crisp spoken word audio that's not too quiet, it's not too loud, it's not clipping, but it's gonna be perfect for your audience. So I'm gonna walk you through this entire process here. So let's go through it. So I have a recording of a video I did a while back. This was the raw audio coming off my microphone here. Um, this is just like a Personas dynamic microphone. It's like a poor man's version of SM7B. So, um, and I'm usually like six inches away from it. That's a good tip there. If you're recording anything spoken word, try to get as close to the mic as possible because when it comes to spoken word audio, um, we don't have like this super loud signal like we would if you were singing into a microphone. So it's really easy to mix kind of like singing vocals if they're recorded in a quiet room because the noise and the input is so much larger than the white noise going on in the background. But if you ever heard the background noise of a microphone when nothing's being done to it, there's some noise there, there's some hiss there. That's just the reality of microphones itself. We're in the digital age, it's not that loud, but there is some hiss there. So when you're talking, your volume of you talking is not that much greater than the hiss. So we got to filter that out, but also compress the audio. So here's the raw audio coming off the microphone. In an ideal world, auto-tune, tuning, those things wouldn't be around as much. And you know, we could all just sing perfectly in tune on all of our tracks. But the reality is a lot of pros and pro studios. So that's the raw audio coming off the mic. It's super quiet. It's peaking at negative 29 dB. That's not going to work for a video or podcast. So we do need to bring the audio up. However, um, that's not going to be such an easy task because there is going to be background noise and hiss um, in the audio. So we can't just compress it. We also need to remove the noise. So let me show you my chain that I use for mixing spoken word audio in Reaper. We're gonna start off with the EQ. We wanna hit with the EQ first. So we wanna make some EQ changes. We wanna get rid of the noise, then use the volume automation processes. So the first thing is this EQ. What I did was, you're gonna to have to EQ it to whoever is speaking and their voice. My voice is kinda of more nasally and high pitched sounding. So I like to take out some of the like annoying mid-range frequencies, give myself some bottom end to give the audio some oomph. You don't wanna to do too much. And then add some clarity in the top end. Auto tune, tuning, those things wouldn't be around as much. And you know, we could all just sing. Perfectly. I'm gonna turn up the volume knob here while I don't have the um, limiter going, just so you can hear it a little better. Auto tune, tuning, those things wouldn't be around as much. And you know, we could all just sing perfectly in tune on all of our tracks. But the you can see I'm using a low pass filter at 36 Hertz. It sounds good off the mic, but I'm just making it a little bit clearer. Don't go too overboard with this or it'll kind of sound unnatural. But to me, this is a good, way to go. Next is this magic plugin. It's free. It's called Denoiser by Bertum. This is like an amazing plugin and it's 100% free. All it does is really filter out the noise in the background. And this is going to be critical when we add compression. So like, for example, when I compress this with the limiter, listen to how much noise this creates. This is going to be a lot of noise. Auto tune, tuning, those things wouldn't be around as much. And you know, we could all just sing perfectly in tune on all of our tracks. What I'm gonna do here actually first, before we go through any of that there, I added the EQ. What I'm also gonna do is go to item processings in Reaper, normalize items. I'm gonna normalize my spoken word audio to negative four dB. This is just gonna bring up the whole volume of the audio. So it makes it easier to hit it with compressors and stuff. For us in home studios, we don't have these hundreds of hours to dedicate. So there is some room and some background noise. If I add these plugins on, listen again. For us in home studios, we don't have these hundreds of hours to dedicate to every. It's not that bad through speakers, but if you listen through headphones, there's definitely some background hiss. I want to get rid of that because I want a professional podcast sound, basically no noise in there. We're going to add this Denoiser Burton plugin, and you're going to need to move these knobs based on the noise in your room itself. I don't have a lot of low end rumble but I do have some top end noise in my room and you adjust these meters based on how much noise there is. This is gonna reduce the noise by a lot. This is gonna reduce the noise by not a lot. Keep in mind, the more you do this, the more it's gonna take the top end out of your voice, the more the audio is gonna start to sound filtered and kind of um, not natural. So get a good balance between the noise in the background and making it so that your audio still sounds natural. In an ideal world, auto-tune, tuning, those things wouldn't- Like when I do that, it sounds too muffled and too broken up. So I want to dial it back a little in bit. In ideal world, auto-tune, tuning, 
those things wouldn't be around to dedicate to every vocal line. So yes, we use a little bit of tuning to. So this is just a really key plugin to get rid of that extra noise, especially if you have a really noisy recording, you're a little too far away from the mic, whatever went down. Um, this plugin has bailed me out so many times. Next is a de-esser. I added this just to get rid of like, if I use any S sounds and it's just really harsh when it hits the limiter and it's just gonna make the person listening go, oh, that's kind of unpleasant. I use this de-esser to limit that a little bit. These are my Reaper settings for de-esser. I set the threshold pretty low, four ratio, around 4,000 Hertz, which to dedicate to every vocal line. So yes, we use a little bit of tuning to compensate for that. You don't wanna give you know, the person speaking to the microphone a lisp with over-processing the de-esser, but this is a good job of reining it in. I use a saturation next because the denoiser is gonna remove some of the uh, exciting artifacts from the vocal, which I wanna kinda add back in. So I'm using the saturation plugin, 62% seems to be the sweet spot, just to make the, seem, the voice seem a little richer and fuller. To dedicate to every vocal line. So yes, we use a little bit of tuning to compensate for that. Um, you know, it's a commonly used tool, even for pro, pro vocalists, they're using tuning, right? So, so that's what I've got next. Next is, I think, a really important part, which is the master limiter, which is what I'm using. This is the stock Reaper. You're gonna need to adjust the settings a little bit depending on uh, how loud the audio is coming in. But if you normalized it, these settings should work pretty well. Negative 9.7 dB threshold. It's in an ideal world, auto-tune, tuning, those things wouldn't... So you can now see it's peaking at negative 1.1 because that's what I set the limit to. And we're really evening it out and crushing that audio. When you're listening to spoken word stuff, you don't want to have to constantly turn it up and down depending on how loud the person's talking. You just want to even, crisp, and clear. And that's what this is doing here. In an ideal world, auto-tune, tuning, those things wouldn't be around as much. And you know we could all just sing perfectly in tune on all of our tracks. But the reality is a lot of pros and pro studios, they've got, you could use some compression before this if you'd like, um, but I find just throwing a straight limiter on does the job. I can make it even more compressed. In an ideal world, auto-tune, tuning, to me, that's a little over the top. That's why I have it at negative 9.9. .9. In an ideal world, everything to do is combine those two things. What it's gonna do is just bring those quiet parts up and squash the loud parts down. You can see in the waveform, it's quiet and then loud. Tune your vocal, I've done that before. My favorite thing to do is combine, it's just gonna rain all that in. Last thing I throw on is a gate. This is just our last sort of defense from, see this big spot here where I'm not speaking? What the gate's gonna do is just cut off the audio there. Cause what you're gonna get is just a lot of noise if you have the gate off because we're using a limiter. We're bringing up the quiet parts. Well, if it's just pure noise, you're just gonna get a bunch of loud noise. So all you hear there is hiss. We add the gate on, you set the threshold and it's just nothing basically. There's no sound coming in. That's exactly what we want. Don't gate too aggressive or it's gonna be cutting off words, right? It's gonna be cutting off the beginning and end of phrases. But if you use these settings, um, you know, kind of a slow attack, a medium, or uh, I should say fast attack, medium release, a bit of look ahead if you want, or pre-open could be used as well, depending on how bad the audio is. If you have a lot of hiss in the background, you might need to mess with these settings a little more. But set the threshold to where it's not cutting off words, but it's, you know, going dead in these spots where nothing is going on, because I'm playing the audio in the background. And all in all, that's gonna be your recipe for a great audio chain right so here. So we're gonna get into that here, just the basics of how- So we run from this. So we're gonna get into that here, just the basics of how to get the tuning figured out. Yes, you can use a plugin that automatic to that. So to me, that's a really good sound. It's the sound I use on every one of my videos for my channel, and it works really well. And you know, really it's about being close to the mic, speaking close to the, night, the mic. I mean, I'm really close to this microphone as I'm talking. And then, you know, doing your best to even out the volume and get rid of the noise. And you're gonna be in good shape there. You don't need to do anything special with it. If you have a more difficult recording where the person was farther away from the microphone, the input was off, you have more noise, you're gonna need to mess with your gates and this denoiser plugin a little more to kind of filter out more of that noise. That's just kind of the reality of it. Um, you may need to get a little more aggressive with it than you want to, but if you're close to the microphone and you just apply these settings lightly, you'll get a great spoken word podcast video sound. So those are my tips there for mixing a spoken word sound in Reaper. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you'd like to see me break down any other mixing tips in Reaper, I would love to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.